Hey, welcome back, Knife Nerds and Everyday Care People. It's your boy, the Big Knucker, and we have got ourselves a new one that just got in the mail here the other day, and I was really excited to have this knife get here, and um, I'm going to tell you exactly what I think of this little bugger here. It's, uh, it's a real uh, chunk of a knife, that's for sure, and uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much to uh, Warriors and Wonders or Blades Canada for sending me that, as well as sending me some uh, little bit of swag too, some stickers and uh, a little Savivi uh, lanyard bead and stuff like that. I can say hey, thank you so much, you guys. Uh, I appreciate it so much. Now, quickly before we go to the old tabletop, please don't forget to uh, smash the old like button as well as subscribe. Help me to spread my voice. I appreciate it so much, you guys. All right. I mean, and ladies too as well. I can't forget the guys. Can't forget the ladies. Um, no matter what pronoun you used, you're welcome at the Big Canuckers uh, table. All right, let's go have a look. All right, here. So what we have is, it's a Kubi, but what kind of Kubi is it? Kubi, Kubi, do where are you? <laughs> Kubi, do. All right. And the reason I'm singing a Kubi, do song is because this is the Kubi monster dog <laughs> i don't know if the barking was uh would helped or not but it helped me right now at this particular moment in time all right so this has all the really it has all the things of a premium knife and not at a, an extreme premium price you're looking at yourself some titanium handles now these are not just any sort of titanium handles these are radius milled titanium handles and every single edge is chamfered and that stuff takes time, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, it, lots of times you get yourselves straight flat uh, titanium handles and they bite into your hands a little bit and nobody's taking the time to chamfer them. Well, Kubi, whoever's doing their manufacturing has taken the extra time to do a lot of these little things. Uh, anodized pocket clip, anodized um, titanium, anodized uh, pivot, a couple of anodized titanium thumb studs that are, you can see that are as big as uh, <laughs> as a spider hole. So they are monstrous. And it, you know what? This knife overall, I think, does a really, really nice job. Uh, and let's uh, have a look here. All right. So also comes with the, got the old Kubi cloth. And it's got a Kubi um, paper in there. That just gives you social media, Instagram, stuff like that. And nowadays, with your phone, you can scan the old QR code and it takes you right to it. So the packaging on the Kubi seems like it's, you know, very, very top-notch. Uh, it's not cheap at all. Now, size-wise here, oh, we knocked over here. Our friends over at Alberta Firearms, we knocked over their, uh, their tags. And let's have a look here. All right, so kind of something that's a really, really similar size. Uh, it would be the uh, Michael Birch Spyderco Bombshell, which I love this knife too here, by the way. Uh, another really kind of bugger here is the uh, the Michael Birch Chubby, as you can see there. And then um, just to give it a little bit more uh, look, here we have got the Spyderco uh, Paramilitary 2, because a lot of us know exactly what's in this Paramilitary 2, and we know exactly the kind of the size of it. And then there you go. That gives you an idea of, of the size. Uh, Handle-wise, you're looking just a smidge smaller than the Paramilitary 2, which is surprising because the Paramilitary 2 has got a really, really big handle. Uh, but if you're looking at kind of edge to edge, you are um, not losing a whole lot of edge. I know this here is listed at 2.96 inches for blade length, but you've got most of that in cutting edge too as well. Where this one here is listed at you know 3.43, I do believe, and you're missing some of the uh, blade length due to this 50/50 choil. So I would say that you have got very similar uh, cutting edge between the paramilitary two and this Kubi. Uh, it, now you can see here, of course, the Kubi is a little bit chunkier all the way down to the very tip here, where this one's always had kind of a slender tip. Now, this is not kind of a comparison against the PM2. I just thought I'd give you a kind of, some of the strength of this Kubi. I mean, it's a very pretty looking knife, but it's also got a really, really chunky three mil. Uh, is it three? No, it's four mil um, blade thickness. Uh, now, it's kind of a really high, flat uh, ground here. Now, some people say it's a flat ground. I mean, it's more of a saber ground with a, just a little bit here. Now, the nice thing about this is that uh, this flat spot here allows you to hook onto some of your uh, sharpening, in, in sharpening uh, systems. I have a KME and this knife came from factory. It was sharp, you know, it would probably, you know, it would cut paper, wouldn't shave. 
Uh, you know, it cut through some rope, some cardboard, but it just was, I like my knives, sticky, sticky sharp. I mean, really, really sticky sharp. And that's what it is now. I picked this up to uh, 2,500. Uh, I took up to 1,000 grit of diamond stones, and then I stropped it with 1,000 uh, grit uh, um, wet, dry sandpaper, and then 2,500 grit wet, dry sandpaper, and finished it off with a few stripes, few one micron strops, and that's what my edge here, not completely polished, but pretty pretty, it's a pretty pretty one, uh, coming in at 17 inches, or 17 degrees. Now, when you get this thing, you'll notice that this edge is, it's really quite thick behind the edge. Now this, hey look, this knife is not gonna be there for you to be uh, slicing, uh, you know, uh, slicing tomatoes so thin that your in-laws will leave home, you know, leave your house. It's not gonna be like that. It's there to uh, get into a crazy, uh, you know, some twisted style rope you want to kind of punch through or some big cardboard, you know, some thick, even you can even take this knife and open up a paint can. I, I think this tip here is so stout that you would have no doubt opening up a paint can. Now, these, of course, this is the premium model with the, uh, uh, it's got the 20, uh, what do we got here? It has got the uh, CPM 20 CV steel on it. So it is a premium steel. Let me get that little piece of thing on there, a little fingerprint off there, because this is a fingerprint magnet. Um, so it does have absolutely premium steel, and all the other accoutrements are, pre, are stainless too as well, or, 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 or titanium. Titanium thumb stub, uh, Kubi titanium uh, pivot uh, cover, uh, titanium pivot uh, screw, titanium... Um, uh, titanium here in your uh, pocket clip that's anodized you've also got yourself a looks like inside there you're going to have yourself a uh, lock bar insert too as well with a um, over travel stop on the inside it's running on ceramic caged bearings and a ceramic detent so like this you know ceramic or titanium backspacers with of course a uh, uh, of course a titanium um, lanyard hole there so it doesn't have a hole driving all the way through it does have like a pin there and I'm able to put my uh, lanyard on there because I, I absolutely love love having a lanyard on, especially on these smaller knives I mean this one here I say smaller but I mean I've got big double XL hands and I can get a four finger grip on this and I can get a four finger grip on this and use the jimping on here which is cut really really nice by the way or I can take that and I can choke up on that a little bit and all right on top of the blade was still being very, very comfortable uh, without, you know, really cutting my hand. I have to be careful a little bit, though. As you can tell, knives will bite you. My three stitches are... You know what? My stitches here... Uh, I went to bed one night. I've got three stitches in there. I woke up the next morning. I've only got two. So either it snagged on a blanket and pulled out or the stitch fairy came and, and took it. So, but... She didn't leave any money under my pillow, damn it. So I'm down to two stitches. That's why I've got the I've got the the wound covering on it right now. <clears throat> but let's go over some just some plain old stats on this thing here, all right? Uh here. oh my goodness, my glasses aren't what they used to be. Let's take them off. All right. Overall length is 7.01 inches. So you can see it's got some, you know, uh, it's middle of the road. It's on the smaller side. I think when you're looking at when you're looking at a kind of a full-size knife, I think you're looking at eight inches and up. I think anything under eight inches, you're looking at kind of a medium to small knife. All right, blade length is 2.95 inches, which is very, very important for people out there who have the sub three inch uh, laws that they're having to deal with. I think you've got a great EDC here uh, and a whole lot of cutting uh, too as well with that uh, edge. Um, <clears throat> handle length is uh, 4.06 inches. Uh, handle is enough to give me four four fingers on there with a little bit to spare too as well so and i've got double xl hands so there's enough handle there now the uh blade material is like i said cpm 20 cv which is a super steel which is an excellent excellent steel blade hardness they have at 59 to 61 rockwell which is exactly where you want to kind of be in there with cpm 20v it is a sheep's foot uh, style blade which is something that is <clears throat> you know people who have sheep foots absolutely love them i mean you're able to really kind of get in there and do uh some really fine kind of slicing with that uh you know the the penetration i mean it, it's if you're looking at penetrating something that's kind of hard sheep's foot may not be the one for you but speaking as a defensive uh weapon now heaven forbid you have to kind of do that uh um 
that uh, penetration, what happens here is this here doesn't cut because it's a, it's a flattened edge and it actually, how it works is when you, uh, when you penetrate soft tissue, this takes and it moves down and it slices and it makes an even wider hole that just, you know, it makes a hole that's twice as wide as this here. Uh, so your actual ended wound by the time you're finished is about that big. That's the real dangerous part of a, of a sheep's foot as far as tactical uh, wise. Uh, now it's got a satin finish. Really, really pretty, pretty finish on there. You can see some of the lines on here. Uh, I think it's, it's an excellent, excellent finish. Um, handle material, of course, is a 6AL4V titanium. Excellent titanium. Uh, radius titanium. Chamfer titanium. Um, and, I mean, just really, really well done. I mean, the fit and finish on this knife was absolutely excellent excellent now it is a frame lock so it is a reeves integral flame lock so it is extremely extremely tough though the lockup on here is very very small mine's about 20 percent uh, i've seen people say 10 to 15 percent but you know 20 percent with the ceramic detent ball in there and the, the ceramic uh with the lock face on here and the 20 cv i don't see this traveling anytime soon i think you're going to be at 20 percent and i'd say in 10 years of hard use of this knife you probably would not see that move very much at all and i did some kind of spine whacking test on that just to see if it would kind of close up no it's on there it's on there real quite quite good uh, now they say that the clip is ambidextrous but i actually kind of have to wonder that uh, there is a screw here that you could pop out and perhaps put here. Uh, but uh, when I seen one of these taken apart, this seems to be kind of milled inside there. There's a little bit of a milled area inside there. So they say it's ambidextrous. I just kind of doubt that. I, I don't want to take it apart because I'll, I'll tell you why at the end. All right. <clears throat> now the washers are the cage ceramic ball bearings. Backspacer is titanium. Here we go. Clip is the same uh, 6AL4V titanium. Uh, tip up right-handed. Yep, you gotta have the tip up right-handed. See, that? there we go. Uh, pivot cap, of course, is the 6A4V uh, titanium. All your screws here are titanium too as well and anodized. So this is another little excellent touch on here. Now the weight here is 4.8 ounces uh, as well as the designer is Dmitry Osarenko. And uh, I don't know, I'm not too super familiar with uh, this gentleman's uh, work, but I mean, it seems like he's got an excellent eye because this knife is gorgeous excuse me i just need a little bit more of my wake up juice here <clears throat> so uh, yeah so dimitri osarenko now the country the, this is made in china too as well so uh it looks like this stuff here is fully milled um on the inside too as well it's you know it's got some weight saving in, on the inside there now i'm not going to take this apart and do any sort of maintenance on there because i am going to do a catch and release with this one and i'm going to give you guys the first chance to uh to uh, own this uh my subscribers um so and then after that i'm going to put this on a couple of forums and just you know send it down the road and, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with this knife this is an excellent little knife I mean, I, I'm really, really quite, you know, surprised at, uh, at the action on this knife. Like, I mean, if you look at it, it's, it's, it's fall shut. Um, it's totally, totally drop shut. It's beautiful, smooth, smooth action. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, you can spidey flick it. Uh, you can thumb flick it. And you can actually kind of open it up just, you know, with your thumb, no problem. This this clip here is really, really nice. In my hands, I don't really have any total hot spots on here. I mean, you know, there is a little bit of, of, of uh, you know, things, you know, a little, little bit of pokey right there, but nothing, I mean, if I had to do, you know, some twisted sisal rope cutting with this, I don't think I would have any issues with it whatsoever. The fidget factor is quite high, especially with uh, the fact that it is so drop shutty. Uh, I just think it's an excellent, excellent, excellent blade. And I am actually quite impressed here with this offering from Kubi. Now, I had a, I reviewed a Kubi knife that was, I think, uh, probably half a dozen knives ago. I ended up picking up from uh, my friend Jacob at uh, Canadian Cutting Edge. And it was it was a lot of knife for the money, but I still felt like it had some, I mean, it just was, I mean, it kind of gave me a little bit of that no-name feeling. And that's maybe me being a little bit of a, a kind of a knife snob. Uh, a lot of my spider codes that I like to carry and a lot of my knives I like to carry are, are quite expensive. And you can, a lot of them you can tell. But this, uh, this Kubi is, you know, it is definitely pushing the boundaries. Now, right now, 
uh, if you have a look at these, I mean, the lowest priced one in the States is $160 American. And by the time you uh, factor in the uh, chain exchange rate, shipping and stuff like that, you're well over $200 for, for this knife. Um, you look over at, uh, I think, uh, Heroes uh, over in Ontario, and it's $225 too as well for this. And even places in the States, if you look on the Kubi website, it's $200. Um, and there is a, another couple other places that are just kind of the, like, you know, Blade HQ and stuff. They're 180. So, I mean, this is, um, you know, not a, a budget knife by any stretch of the imagination. There is budget versions available of this with like NO6 steel and G10 and stuff. And you're looking at, you know, 60 or 70 bucks for those. But if you're looking at the full titanium 20 CV, uh, caged uh, ceramic bearings, titanium everywhere, completely adorned, anodized titanium, uh, you're looking at probably 200 bucks. Now, what I will end up doing here is anybody who's a subscriber of mine. Now, let's just see here. Let's give this a knife score. I'm going to probably give this an 8 out of 10. Uh, it's going to lose a little bit just because I think this is just a little bit. Um, the sheep's foot blade on it and the overall styling is just a little bit out of my comfort zone. Um, I like uh, things that are a little bit difficult or not difficult, a little bit weird for sure. But I just think that this little bit of a ramp here and these little bit of a large, you know, they've done these well, mind you. I mean, they're, they're very, very grippy and they grip your thumb extremely well. But I would have rather have seen a spider hole in there and maybe perhaps have this more reminiscent of a spider code. That, that's kind of my, my opinion. Uh, <clears throat> and the other thing is when I put this in my pocket, uh, it seems like it hooks a little bit the bottom of this clip. Now, I would probably, if I was going to keep this, I would take this clip and I would give it a little bit of a smooth down on the corners and it would go inside my pocket a little bit better. It just seems like it's it snags. And if I've got it, something that's a little bit lighter, I see, I've been carrying these, uh, uh, I've been carrying this in my shorts uh, and it just seems to kind of snag on my shorts. It's almost like I've, a couple times I felt, geez, did I cut my shorts? That's how kind of sharp that is. That, that's the one part where I think um, Kubi did not do the proper kind of chamfering. Everywhere else on the knife, the chamfering is excellent, but I'm just gonna kind of knock those off just a little bit. But, and also when you are closing this up, um, be careful. Uh, I, uh, there is some, a little bit of chimp, uh, a little bit of jimping at the bottom here. And that's where I kind of ride my, my thumb to catch on it. Or if I'm down a little bit low and I'm being a little bit lazy, as long as that edge is hitting the back of my thumb not too hard, it's just putting a little tick in there. But if I have any sort of exposed flesh, oh boy, oh boy, that will cut. So anybody who is a subscriber, and if you want this knife, uh, I want you to uh, send me an email at uh, bigcanucker at gmail.com or quickly leave a message here in the link in the description and uh, we will get together. I will sell this for exactly what I paid for it plus shipping, which is $167 plus shipping. Uh, I'm gonna put this on the, probably some of the forums and uh, on uh, some other places at a little bit higher, but uh, basically I'm selling it for exactly what I paid for it, $167 plus shipping. So if you would like that, then by all means, oh, and that's uh, Canadian too as well. So if you've any of you, my friends from down south, want to pay some Canadian money for a knife, well, I mean, you'll save yourself a few bucks even more. All right, and, but the shipping might be just a touch more too as well to head into the States, but I don't think it's anything that's crazy um, a, a lot. I mean, I think we're talking one, two dollars, maybe three, four pesos. All right, so... $167 gets you a brand new Kubi. And the reason I'm actually going to be doing this is because I have got to feed the machine and I have got another two, three knives on order. So I have to find some place to pay for them. And uh, this one is unfortunately a victim of total economics. So if you like what you saw here, please, please don't forget to give me the thumbs up as well as subscribe. And please, please stay safe out there. Keep your stick on the ice. The shiny side up. This is the Big Connector. Sing